I do want to yeah. see your cake. What it's the... got a hole in it. Why is that cheese or a cake? Hole? It's not cheesecake. It's um, pastel, <laughs> pastelia cake. Is it Swiss cake? It is now. Because yeah, I just because uh... you well, like shoved your thumb through it. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, this is what <laughs> it's supposed to look like. <laughs> Ah, so instead of looking like mush. case, it's just a slice of cheese. Mm -hmm. I love I that. See. I see. Welcome back, my friends. We took a wonderful month off while the show was on break as well after the dissolution of order. We just came back today and got to do the live listen of episode zero and launch it. It was it was incredible. It was very fun. And now that we're a month older and a month wiser, how many of you retained what we did last time? Ooh, I kind of did. Kind of. I'm, I'm hoping Will and maybe Mark will fill me in if I miss anything. But we got, we okay, we left the mainland. We got on the giant ferry with everybody. Uh, we met like, Sassy was there, um, some other person was there, um, heading toward the island. So we talked to them a little bit, got some fun info. Uh, we all went pee in unison. Then we get on the island, and we're like, okay, we're gonna go to this Blunken. We're all gonna try the new, the, uh, Salty by the Sea latte. Definitely, definitely not bad for you to drink that. Uh, and we go to the Duncan. It's closed. We're like, Hello, knock knock, accidentally knock the door in on purpose, definitely on accident. Definitely not on purpose, accident. Knock that door in. Um, and then there's just like an evil slimy guy. Like, you remember Greasy Eloise? You take Greasy Eloise and you just like age him up to like um nasty lighthouse teenager man um who's also made of smoke and guys tentacles? Yeah, made of tentacles. Smoke no. Smoke and wiggly guys. There's no smoke. I just wanna, I just wanna clarify that. Mostly wiggly guys, then. Um, so, you know, he starts beating us up. Um, some of us run away. Some of us get caught. Um, we end up murdering him. I think Iris? Didn't Iris kill him? Oh, yeah, Iris threw a boulder at him with Iris's super mind powers. He didn't live long after that. Um, and so we were like, woo guys. Ooh, oh, boy. All right. And so then we started going home. And then the boat police showed up, and they were like, Bosco, we have a warrant for your arrest. And so we turned to Bosco and we were like, listen, Bosco, actually, wait, did we do that? Or did we I think it, we I think it, that? I think it just ended with the, the ocean okay. police coming for Bosco's breast, as you said, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> his breast, you know, his, his breast. breast. So that B apostrophe A R R E S T. I get it now. I thought they were just <laughs> coming for his titties. Yeah, no, it's a common misconce misconception. In 2033, the cops are here for one of two things: um, your your big ch your big busty boobies, or um, to take you to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you never know which. which. You know, it's a it's a grab bag. You never know which they're coming for. Sometimes Good they're Lord. just the police are just like nice honkers, and then they go to prison. Okay, so that's all well and good. Yes, you covered mostly everything. I think the two things that I'd want to touch on are that Iris was reluctantly elected team leader over the course of a few boss! conversations. Boss, boss, boss. And is, <laughs> and is now gainfully employing Iris and Chris, <laughs> allegedly. Cosmo allegedly. Chris. Second would be that you actually asked Bosco to come with you to the island or accompany you. And they did actually throw a punch at Greasy Charlie. Mm -hmm. uh to help iris out and third is that they're not boat police the, the, this is uh, police on the shore oh no it's definitely uh, boat police if yeah, they're it's not the boat police. then they can have like I, they can have like a sand unit but it's still the boat police <laughs> yeah, the, the <laughs> sand unit is out on the docks <laughs> waiting for your return and now you guys did have a plan you you briefly yes. discussed a plan do you want to start on the boat to deliver your plan? Yes. Immediately, right now. Okay, immediately, right now. Immediately. Bosco. Immediately. Bosco. Bosco, my friend. I don't remember what my voice was. I'm just going to try and go a little bit raspy, I guess. Um, I thought Cosmo Bosco. was, I think Cosmo's like higher. Oh yeah, Cosmo's like kind of nasally. Okay, um, Bosco. Bosco, listen. <laughs> you need to, you need to turn yourself in. Like right now. Turn yourself, go quietly. Like, no, don't, don't give them any reason to suspect 
that you might plan to escape. Bosco was ab- like... <laughs> Bosco, no, 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 no. Listen, Bosco, we're going to break you out. We do not show up on, like, TV camera. We can get you out of prison, Bosco. Bosco is, like, giving you, a, like, an angled, like, side eye if you could see through the mask. I push uh, Iris forward and I'm like, boss, you got to convince him. What? It's the only way. What am I going to say to... You know what, Bosco? They're right. We don't show up on cameras. Um, all you have to do is just, uh, when you're in jail, have a dream with two random strangers, right? Um, and in this dream, uh, it's going to take place maybe at the amphitheater, uh, you know where Camp Camp is. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Um, and then you just have to kill the shadow version of yourself, uh, and then you'll never show up on a camera again. Iris, no! What do you mean, no? That's what we did to not show up on cameras. I'm not, I'm not saying that they need to not show up on a camera. I'm saying that I don't have any other plan to get them away from the police other than to just go with the police right now. And then we, who don't show up on camera, break them out. But it'll just look like, you know, like ghosts did it. Uh, That's Bos- just, it'll just look like they walked out of prison. <laughs> Bosco pulls out a piece of paper and quickly scribbles down as the boat begins to dock. Please do not break me out of prison. Please do not commit any crimes on my behalf. Thank you. Bosco, we can't, we know you didn't do it. It was just like the Gracie version of you. Bosco kind of looks at you like a little uneasy uh, as the boat pulls in, finishes docking, and uh, you all disembark. Waiting for you, dockside. It's the sand police. Are this is the sand police. It's the same <laughs> officer who was there uh, to comfort Kitty Scarlet. Uh, I think his name is like Pete or like Puff Pastry. I think, or... I think it's Peter. I think it's Peter. Officer Peter. Peter Pastry. Peter Pastry. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Pastry. Add that one to the wiki. Peter Pastry comes to uh, grab Bosco and says, Bosco, buddy, uh, you're under arrest. Um, you... Oh, this is a little awkward. You uh, have the right to remain silent because anything you can and... Oh, man, this is rough. Will be used against you in a court of law. Come on, buddy. He's uh, leading Bosco over to a cop car as he's reading them their rights. But also on the dock waiting for you are none other than Team Tulip. And uh, Amanda Tulip flags you down as you get off and she says, That was incredible what was incredible you the three of you we saw you take bosco onto the ship this morning that was brilliant and uh yes, oh. our friend morgan says well after you took your friend onto the boat we knew we had the perfect opportunity to try and steal the videotapes from that john ice cream fucker turns out three people already helped john ice cream with his problem and didn't collect the videotape so uh he didn't really have a problem turning it over. And of course, I don't know. Did you? I assume that was related to the three of you. I mean, we didn't need the tape. You didn't need the tape that showed Bosco very clearly setting Kitty Scarlet's house on fire and burning it down. Yeah, no, we have two copies of it. Well, that's wonderful. But you didn't think to capture the dangerous criminal? I mean, it's fine. It worked out. And now we have Bosco in one place, finally. I mean... They're not a dangerous criminal, and they were also in one place before, which was their job. Nate now chimes in and says, Guys, we all saw the same footage, all right? I don't know about you, but I think things are going from bad to worse here. Uh, I'm sure you didn't hear because you were away, but they had to close down the hiking trail. There is some weird activity going on there so i know you're yeah well i mean like you guys didn't come to uh blunken by the sea but uh that i think is maybe permanently closed due to the employee turning into um, oil oil he just got got oily he got greasy like the child he got greasy like the child have you not seen iris our boss got attacked (laughs) by a greasy haunted child and then we go for a nice boat ride with our clearly not the criminal friend, Bosco, ding dongs. And we get to the island and then the the, the Blunken man is made of 
grease and tentacles and he was evil and unfortunately now he is dead and you don't think that the figure with the copper mask covered head to toe could also be a greasy tentacle monster under there well i mean um, they didn't turn into grease and uh blatantly attack me either in my sleep or when i tried to enter a blunken by the sea so no they did actually, in fact, save Iris. Um, they walked over and started beating the shit out of greasy tentacle uh, Blunken Man. So, you know. Nate turns his attention to Chris and says, Chris, surely you understand that Bosco is clearly the most likely culprit here and is probably the reason we came to Blar Harbor. I, 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 I don't think we could, like, no. I don't, no. Clearly something is controlling the people of this town, haunting them, corrupting them, killing them? I don't know, but we saw- okay, so take the greasy child example, alright? We're sleeping in the hotel, Iris is sleeping in their van, grease child shows up, starts attacking. We come downstairs, evacuate the premises, get to Iris, um, and then once everyone zooms outside, the greasy child, like, dissipated, leaving a regular child, the actual child, uh, I guess her name's Regular Eloise, um... Regular Eloise! <laughs> <laughs> it's her legal name, Regular Eloise. <laughs> regular Eloise Scarlet! Um, and she had no memory of the events. And then you also, on top of that, now you have Bosco, allegedly, allegedly burning down a house, but otherwise not doing anything not like hiding or leaving they were like clearly on the camera but you don't find any of this suspicious or weird you're just gonna bite the first piece of bait that they throw at you isn't that defeat the point of an investigation we did investigate we got the videotapes we saw who did it there is probably a mastermind here but in our opinion all signs pretty clearly point to the person who burned someone's house down I don't but, think like, it's more complicated than that. Have you, but like, have you guys seen Blooby Doo? Like, it's never the first person you think. There's always a red herring. Come on, a Booby. pup named Scooby Doo or Blooby Doo? No, <laughs> come on. Listen, a pup named Booby Doo was one of my fucking favorite, <laughs> fucking favorite films. <laughs> Booby Doo and the Spooky Island. I love that shit. <laughs> Well, we're literally here in Blooby Doo on the Spooky Island, and there was a okay. real monster there. Tell me this. Tell me this one thing, okay? How many people in this town do you think know Bosco, the copper mask-wearing person? Most of them. Most of them. And how many people could put on a replica, even a painted-looking copper mask, and go about their business? Probably not many. If you're trying to frame someone on a camera with a copper mask, when you can't actually prove who is the person behind that mask... You could at least draw some kind of, like, legal questioning if that really was Bosco, or if that was someone dressed like Bosco. These are all things no one is stopping to consider. Look, the three of you, this is your first round, and I get it. And we're not that far ahead of you. But something very wrong is happening in this town. We're pretty sure it's Bosco. If you disagree, that's fine. Take your investigation how you want to, but when we win, it's just going to be another round for you guys. Well, apparently that doesn't really matter. You guys lost the last one anyway, and you're... No, we probably... won. We won our last one. Oh, wait. Who won? Who... Oh, you won your last one. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that changes things. Yeah, it's time to <laughs> beat you up. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um... <laughs> Do you say that out loud? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> time to hmm, beat you up <laughs> oh well you guys won your last round oh, well that means it's time to beat you up <laughs> oh who said that <laughs> oh man let's crowbar back in pocket <laughs> uh, um down on boss re real 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 quick uh you guys said something weird happened at the campground yeah uh, that, the um, hiking trail the hiking, hiking trail, trail yeah that's sally uh fits whatever the fuck well, she got some sort of dangerous squirrel. She's locked up in the gift shop right now. I don't know anything else about it, but rabbit animals, monsters burning down houses, and apparently tentacle oil monsters, that's enough 
of Maine for me. Wait, did you say she got like a caught a dangerous squirrel? Yeah, or apparently like, uh, she like was like attacked by a dangerous squirrel and put it in a cage or something. We have to go to the gift shop. Okay. I'm making a note. Also, by the way, I heard that monster comment. Bosco's a person that was rude. Um, let's see. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Cosmo's was like writing down notes from this conversation um and just kind of walking away yeah all right <laughs> do the rest of you follow absolutely all right uh sick rick calls as you as you start to walk away and he says hey uh don't you want to see what happened with percy hey uh, uh tulips go away and i shuffle back over to the sick rick and i'm like this is a <laughs> the sick this rick is a, this is <laughs> the one and only this is an r team exclusive okay and i start like pushing sick rick towards his sick shed whoa <laughs> uh you guys head back let me uh wrong one i get them confused all right you head back to sick rick's boat rental uh, as you push him inside and uh sick rick said well thank you for coming out today that was a lot more exciting than i thought it was gonna be uh but a deal's a deal you came out uh maybe even saved some lives so let me look up uh, when Percy spent his tokens, okay? Can I ask you a rude question? I can't legally stop you. Is your <laughs> full name Illness Richard? <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes. As a matter of fact, my full name is Illness Richard. <laughs> Chris, Cosmo's like, scribbles <laughs> a bunch of his notes. Cosmo's <laughs> nodding and, like, flipping between, like, six pages, and they're like, yeah. I figured. All right. Um, yes. Uh, please show us the Percy files. All right, one second here. Okay, so Percy accessed and cashed out his tokens a few days ago at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. specifically, huh? Nice. Like 3.15. 3.15 th specifically, huh? Yeah. Okay, sorry that was not directed... At you that was just a general oh just general excitement i too get yeah. excited at 315. and how many coins did uh percy cash in all of them every one that he had associated with his account okay and then do you know where that money went uh no you don't have any record keeping of no i, I collect the tokens and they get the boats they get what do you think so this is many... the future i don't so i'm sorry how many boats did he get Oh, a handful of them. That's it's a not... handful of boats. Why? What? You didn't think to be like, why do you need this many boats? I was asleep. Oh. Why are you allowing cash yeah, you transfers can't... in 3 a.m., 3.15 specific? I don't know. I Yo, have this a flawed is a... system, I guess. This is a poor business. Oh. I, I didn't mean that. I didn't say that out loud. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. Chris, like, grabs the air. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, illness, Richard. Is there anything else you have on Percy, or any weird comings and goings? Anything relating to another day at three fifteen? Did anyone else make a large withdrawal or transfer? Nope, not that I know of. Well, uh, it's been great. Wait, I wait. Have you heard anything about dangerous squirrels recently? Dangerous? Or any squirrels? like dangerous wildlife? No, I don't think I have heard anything about dangerous squirrels right. or wildlife. Worth a shot. Chris walks out. <laughs> <laughs> Not a care in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, did the rest of you follow your tall compatriot outside? Yes. Uh, yes. All right. Where would you like to go? Gift shop. Gift shop? All right. You guys head up across the street. There's a small crowd who are like kind of like holding their... their hands up against the door one person's knocking and uh as you approach a, a tourist turns to you and says uh oh, sorry the um gift shop looks like it's closed right now i could open a closed door <laughs> uh the, the man steps aside <laughs> we're experts at opening closed yeah, yeah, doors yeah, yeah. check this check this out well chris knocks on the door first he's not gonna like you know All right, sally you, you hear hello Occupied. hey are there any dangerous squirrels in there <laughs> Who's asking? Uh, your, Chris. Your friends, Cosmo and Iris and Chris. Uh, the door opens, and uh, in like rapid succession, the three of you are yanked into Ooh. the gift shop Ooh. as the door closes. <laughs> and you see a very frantic-looking Sally Fitzsimmons, who is like 
basically running like towards a different part of the gift shop than you were at last time and it's like holy shit it's you guys let me tell you something i don't know what the fuck you did to me but ever since i bought a thousand dollars worth of meat because i was told to uh my life has gone to shit let me ask you something do <laughs> can you guys talk to squirrels no no i can't i've tried do you well, I didn't know if it was like a meat eater thing um, because I've never really eaten meat. And then suddenly now I have to purchase like a buttload of meat, uh, uh, all thanks to your blonde friend here. Uh, uh, so so then, you know, I'm walking through the woods and this crazy squirrel jumps out of nowhere while I'm on a very nice hike, by the way. Just want to point out there that my day was ruined. Thanks for asking. Uh, uh, and, and, and then uh, the squirrel talked to me. And you, it it just no, is... no, sorry, go say? ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, the, the squirrel said, Sally, you have to stop bathing in herbs and spices because it's not working on you. I didn't know what it meant. No one else seemed to hear it. So I put it in a little cage and I brought it back here and I'm freaking out. That's not what you do with talking living things. Just saying you don't just put them in cages. <laughs> have you considered taking an actual shower? And seeing if that, <laughs> it, no, no, hear me out. And seeing if that solves your squirrel problem. Well, that's absurd. Can I, you need to see this, okay? You, because I'm pretty sure that the meat has something to do with the squirrel. Can are you guys ready for uh -huh. this? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, can you show us sure. the meat and the squirrel? I don't have the meat. I'm picking the meat up tomorrow. So how so, has that ruined your life? You haven't eaten any meat. But I'm committed to eating it because you told me to. Yeah, that's fine. But you haven't physically <laughs> done it. <laughs> So therefore, there shouldn't be any changes in your squirrel talking abilities. Therefore, this situation is not related to your meat purchases. However, please show me your squirrel. Withhold judgment on whether this is related to the meat purchases until you see this. Uh, and she reaches around the corner and pulls out like this kind of flimsy metal cage with, sure enough, a very strange, very deranged, kind of diseased looking squirrel. I take a picture of it. Wow. Um, Hello. Noticeably, thing. this squirrel appears to be exhibiting similar signs to what you saw in both Greasy Eloise and Charlie. It has these oh. enlarged black pupils and these kind of more like oily hair to it with these like curling and unnaturally long uh, fingers and toes. You found a greasy squirrel. Oh, wow. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's... It's okay. She's haunted. Uh, hi, little guy. <laughs> it, the, the, the squirrel does not address you. Um, you know, I said hi. Do you want so, it? Do you want the squirrel? No. Is no. it still talking to you? No, it hasn't talked to me in a few hours. Probably because you locked it in the cage. Maybe because I locked... But I'll tell you what. I'd rather the squirrel didn't talk to me. I don't want the squirrel to talk to me. Then why yeah. did you take it home? So was it following you? Like, what, what, what happened? What? I just thought that I needed people to know that I wasn't crazy, so I put the greasy squirrel in a cage. But it's just a greasy squirrel. It doesn't talk. Should no, we? I, I heard it. No, I heard it talk. Should we maybe warn the tulips about this? Probably. I mean, as much as I disagree with them on Bosco, um, I mean, they are... Oh, I mean, me too. I, like don't respect them at all i just don't want them to maybe be confronted by an oily and then um <clears throat> be unprepared i think you did swap numbers with them okay i call morgan tulip so you pick up your phone the more reasonable tulip you pick up your phone that has its screen disabled why why because lola took over everyone's phones oh hell hey i asked lola to please call morgan tulip Hey, which one of you three was the one that was asking about, like, the company that was running the reflection game? Uh, I, I don't know, me, maybe? Were you? Maybe Iris? I kind of thought it was Iris. I don't that remember. Sounds, that sounds... I, well, let's that say was, was at a, least one or two days ago. <laughs> well, it was a joint, conf confused effort. We all want to know. Well, I finally found it, Cosmo's phone says. Uh-huh. Uh, apparently, the organization running this is um, uh, Spud, Spud Light Brewing Company Holdings Limited, which is based out in Cuba. 
and that's owned by uh, Finkel Wait, Ford's uh, big, big bingo bongo business, which is owned by like an, another wait, shell wait, company. Wait, wait, wait! You're, uh, which is you're going by... too fast. Well, the point is, there's like a hundred of these things. It's like just a empty, endless chain of shell companies. Oh, okay. So, like, it's like, uh, it, okay. there is there there's someone owns it, but they're they're buried in it. I'm going to keep looking into, you know, the root of this, but I just wanted to let you know that the three of you are involved in some big shit. Oh, well, thank you for your research, Lolo. That's actually really helpful. Mm -hmm. Doesn't feel uh, helpful, but I'm going to take the compliment. Can you do me a favor? Yeah, what's up? Can you call Morgan Tulip? Uh, yes, I can. And you hear, Hello. Hi Morgan, uh, this is Cosmo Astrofell. We talked earlier. We yelled at you on the br on the dock. somewhere. Yeah, the that dock. Was, we... Yeah, that was like twenty minutes ago. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you remember <laughs> us, but we found a <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> found a greasy squirrel, um, and we just wanted what? to let you. <laughs> Okay. okay. You know how we told you what it meant to be greasy? How greasy is haunted by whatever dark shits in this town? Bosco, yes. No. Anyway, the the grease it spread from people to squirrels. So Ew, there's that's an, fucking yeah. nasty. Mm -hmm. so we're trying to warn you guys that uh, the grease is not done. But whoever's behind it, don't say Bosco, uh, is still out here <laughs> greasing people up. So I don't want you to be attacked and not have any expectations of that. So just be careful. I specifically. Be careful of people or animals acting uh, weirdly uh, and then becoming black slimy. They also will have like big black distended pupils. Um, they'll just not look right, like kind of feral, kind of ill looking. Maybe have like a fuzzy black outline. That's the grease we're talking about. If you see anyone Ew, or any. They're outlined yes, by grease. It's, yes, it's gross, but will you listen, please? This is serious. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely keep our eyes out for any greasy individuals and stay far, far away from them. Well, if you, I mean, don't do that. Go kick their ass, but, you know, get the gre beat the grease out of them. That's usually what we do. I mean, I don't know if that's a solution. Amanda, oh. we're going to have to kick the shit out of some greasy bros, okay? All right, I've informed them. Okay, well, you have a nice day, and we'll... Talk soon. Bye. And I click hang up immediately. Okay, bye. Sally, who has been waiting patiently, uh, kind of like moves the squirrel cage just like ever so slightly. Uh, and as she does, you notice that a kind of weird amulet is bumping against her chest. Mm -hmm. As you get a hey, better look at it, it appears to be a... It's, first of all, it's fucking disgusting. Is it a frog? It looks like a frog with two front legs, no back legs. The back legs are not part of the amulet. And these, like, kind of, like, Ugh. bulbous eyes. Um, notice Sally. It looks very wet and slimy. Sally, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? How long have you had that? I don't know. I, I, found, it in, I found it in the woods. That's actually my uh, family's heirloom. Can I have it back? This it's true. I met their grandma decorative frog frog yeah their grandma's a frog perfect frog yeah amulet. i know i was i was walking my micro boar the other day and i lost it first day in town it was really unfortunate sally 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 <laughs> what if we took this greasy squirrel off your hands solve your curse of meat problem take the meat karma right off your hands and we'll take the cursed frog, which definitely probably so like brought the attention of this greasy squirrel and the angry meat gods, um, and you could just go back to vibing in your spices. How about I give you the amulet? You buy the meat from John Ice Cream in the morning. Don't have a thousand dollars. What this amulet's pretty valuable. I mean, yes, it is my family heirloom that you uh, took and I'm not giving back to me for some reason, which is pretty weird if I do say so myself that someone lets you know that they lost a family heirloom and you have it and you just you want to you want to extort them for money for it. But like, go off. That is pretty weird. Can you roll fast talk? Of course I can. <laughs> Where are all my D10s? There we go. 
Wow. Oh shit. Where's Fast Talk? That's a... an extreme success. All right. So I'll give you the frog amulet and you'll take the weird squirrel? Yes. Yes. All right. And she uh, removes the gross, very wet and damp frog amulet uh, and motions for you to take the squirrel cage. I pick up the squirrel cage with like fingers. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay. Uh, I take the I take the frog amulet because it's my family heirloom, allegedly. Great. Yeah, allegedly. And Sally is like, "Okay, bye." Bye, Sally. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, we leave. Uh, okay. Let us know if you find any more weird oily stuff. Oh okay, yeah, don't uh, don't like stay away from that shit. It might attack you. It's all feral. Ew. Okay. Bye. Bye. Night is fast approaching. Is there anything else you would like to do on this Blar Harbor evening? We should investigate something else. <sighs> um, or, sh or should we go to sleep now and then wake up to go poke around between 2.50 and 3.30 when clearly whatever is doing things is at its peak? Uh, we should do that, but when we go back to the hotel, I would like to approach the party frog. Oh yeah, we probably gotta give that thing its amulet back. I think it's like an actual god. All right. <laughs> well, you guys want to order? Um, you guys want to order to go from the spicy clam and then pig out at the hotel and then pass out? Sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, All right. God. Give me a one second here. I just gotta find something. Um, I will be taking a nice uh, glamour shot of the frog amulet. Okay. Do you take your squirrel with you? Yeah. May as well. It's in the cage. What else am I <laughs> supposed to do with it? Ditch it on the street? That's littering. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you order you order takeout from Bloober Bleats uh, from the spicy clam. What are you guys ordering? I ordered the um uh so you know like corn nuggets, how they're like hush puppies but like filled mm. with like a cream corn. I get the clam nuggets, uh where they're like a hush puppy filled with the carbonated clam chowder. Okay. Ew. Nice. Wow. <laughs> Chris? Wait, wait, no, Chris isn't ready. Okay, <laughs> Iris? I'll get the carbonated clam chowder, because I've heard that it's allegedly so good that you could drink up to 17 cups of it in one sitting. I, sh I should have made you roll something better for that. That is absurd that Cosmo consumed that much carbonated <laughs> clam chowder. Cosmo's like, sometimes I'm a bottomless pit. And I fill it with soup. <laughs> Can you belatedly roll for tummy ache? <laughs> <laughs> the next day, I'm just like, oh god, oh, oh, the clam chowder's don't... haunting me. I don't eat 17 cups of carbonated soup. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, what are you getting? Chris is gonna get the the carbonated clam pocket. It's like a, a hot <laughs> pocket, but Good. just carbonated clam chowder inside. That's and somehow like... the worst of the three <laughs> options. And they have like an yeah. advertisement for it on their website. It's like a gif of like somebody taking a bite of it and it's just like like everywhere. Floating clam yeah. pockets. <laughs> Yo, <ow. laughs> oh, Max, we didn't do luck stuff at the beginning of this. Oh my uh, gosh, you guys didn't keep me honest with the luck I'm stuff. Sorry, I, said, I just remembered I it said, while I was looking at my character sheet. I said you guys gotta keep me honest and you didn't keep me honest and now you don't I'm get keeping, luck. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping you honest halfway through. All right, that's fine. This is our this is our halfway through luck break, everyone. Considering, uh, we'll, we'll we'll say it's because we're going to bed soon. I mean, it is probably a good time. The action's kind of winding down. We're um, full of soup. You're full <laughs> of soup. It's the perfect time to feel lucky again. We're all uh, clammed up. You're all clammed up and ready to go. So why don't you guys you go know, ahead and make a luck roll for me? Yeah, how do I do that again? <laughs> you You just make a luck check to start with. Ah, okay. I failed. <laughs> or, well, okay. I'm sorry, not I failed. I'm sorry, I passed, which is a you failure. Passed. Yes, I believe that is correct. I'm, I'm looking up I'm... the rule again because I'm bad about this stuff. Okay. Um, if the rule is higher than their current luck, you can add 2d10 plus 10 to their luck score. If the rule is equal to or less than the hero's present luck score, 1d10 plus 5 luck points are recovered. I missed it. I didn't get it. All right, so you got you got below your luck? Yeah. Okay, so you and Beth are going to get 1d10 plus 5. And Will, what did you get? Um, My current luck is 74, and I rolled a 53. Okay, so that's lower. So you also get 1d10 plus 5. Yippee! 
And now that you're all clammed <laughs> up and lucked up, uh, you all trudge into the Porcelain Dalmatian Hotel. And immediately, Stone Porter goes, Whoa! Hey! No wild animals in here! It's not wild. It's... It cage. looks diseased. In a cage. It's fine. Look you've at never that seen thing. an you've never seen an animal survive an oil spill before. This is ridiculous. We're just, we're just gonna wash <laughs> him off with some Dawn dish soap like the commercials, and then release him back on the beach where he'll join his friends. Can you not do <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we're visiting Maine! I don't have access to running water in a public facility. <laughs> Uh, Stone is like, can, isn't there anywhere else that you can wash a squirrel? I, sl I slide him five dollars, and I'm like, what if you didn't see this? Then you would carry on your merry way. Hey, you only ordered a room for one night. I would like one more night, please. How many? <laughs> It'll be... Iris, would you like to sleep in the safety of the room this time? Um... Please, please Iris, please. Do you guys allow microbores? Well, apparently we we allow Ow. caged squirrels. So is that a yes? It's an I yes. guess. All Sweet. Right. Three people then, please. One room for three people. Uh, which which room do you want? The the cheapest one for three people. The cheapest one for three people. Okay, hang on a second. I need to pull up my references because my life fucking sucks. Okay. So, uh, just to clarify, uh, 225 for two twin beds or one king bed, uh, 400 for um, an adjoining two rooms with one king in them each. Uh, we also have the $699 honeymoon suite, uh, which has the uh, 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 heart-shaped bed, the full hot tub, the romantic views of the Atlantic. What was that first one again? Uh, two twin beds or one king bed. Is there also a couch? Yeah. Uh, sick. Let's Perfect. do that one. Let's do that one. Okay. Uh, so you guys get the cheapest room <laughs> available <laughs> <laughs> um, to split three ways amongst yourselves. And, do we just uh, like draw straws to see who let, who ends up on the couch? Oh uh, no, Chris will do it. Oh, Chris. Uh, Cosmo's like, well, you know, if we end up having to stay another night, I'll take the couch tomorrow. Ah, oh, heck yeah. Thanks. All but right. like, the couch is cool. I own a banana stand. I don't really care about where I sleep. You do not own a banana stand. I thought you owned a zook stand. Oh my god. I own a zook stand. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to, like, inform you of your no, own life, no, but no. I could absolutely never forget once you've told me that information. It's Thank you, stuck. thank you, thank you. I was I was thinking about different fruits and vegetables. I'm really hungry. Uh, I had our blooper bleeds, and I'm like, let's feast. All right, you guys get fucked up on some variations of carbonated clam chowder as night falls on your second evening in Blar Harbor. Now, once what time do you guys want to wake up? Well, once we're done eating, we have to go talk to Party Frog. All right, you guys head back down into the lobby. Uh, they've turned on the evening lights. Uh, who Who's going to approach our partying friend? Probably Not Iris. Either. I mean, I can do it because I have it, but if anyone else wants to... No, nah, I'm pushing Iris to the frog. <laughs> All right, Iris, as you approach the frog, he turns and goes, My God, that's the amulet, the legendary frog amulet. I hand it to him. He uh, accepts it in his like frog fingers, which are very clearly like a costume because the fingers are just kind of like flopping everywhere. Um, but you kind of put it into the, the palms of these flopping fingers and, and Party Frog uh, shoves it quickly into his mouth uh, where there are mm -hmm. definitely not two very human looking eyes uh, staring back at you. Uh, and he says, you, sir, have done something truly incredible here tonight. Listen, I know not where your journey is going to take you. But I do suspect I know. You'll need a very important code if you want to proceed. Okay, wait on me. The code where you can find me in this mysterious location is Froggy. Spelled with an I or a Y? F-R-O-G-G-I-E. Froggy. And then what, where is this location? Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
The three of you are travelers, aren't you? No. I can see it in your eyes. You will find where you can find me. You will know when it is time to input the froggy, and you will be handsomely rewarded. Okay. Are you a celestial god? Oh! -ho! And party frog skedaddles. Uh, we come back. I wanted to take a selfie with you. He's gone. Don't worry, wow. guys. I uh, I wrote down his his cryptic code. That's definitely not the insane ramblings of a man in a costume. <laughs> just in case he is actually uh, a party god frog. Because could you fucking imagine? It's, be this is just a man who's been stuck in a costume for far too long. Listen, I'm betting that's ninety nine percent. Like ninety nine. 0.9% of definitely what this situation is, but if there is even a chance of that, like, 0.01% where he's actually some kind of, like, all-powerful magical being, and we just got in good with him early on in this awful, magical kidnapping adventure I think we found ourselves stuck in, um, that'd be great. What if he could just, like, magic us a, a, a battle frog or something and we just sick it on i don't know evil squirrels i don't think i want to wage a war on squirrels i'm just gonna say that's not a good idea well i mean like look at frito upstairs oh, by the way i've named the, the he smells like frito so i named him frito um yeah you know all right okay. I anyway can't. i i i think if i don't want to wage war against frito since he seems <laughs> upset but <laughs> He seems upset. He seems upset. So we he should is, fight with him. He's greasy. And I, I don't know how I don't know how long we can allow that to fester with before it just consumes him. If it hasn't already. Well, let's sleep on it and we'll figure out what to do with him. What you got them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. Is, is that a party very frog? nice? That's nice. a party frog. Yeah, so we would never forget what he looked like. That was really good. How could anyone right. forget it? He's Fair. just he's just gonna be back in the lobby the next time you guys come back, but <laughs> you know. Before we go back upstairs, I'm asking for an extra blanket from the lad at the counter. Stone, classic legendary, this isn't normal season three character, Stone Porter. Yeah. Alright. He gives you an extra blanket. He says, Thanks. Don't use it all in one place. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Uh, I walk away. Okay. You guys go back upstairs. Why don't you fill me in on your game plan? We still got a little bit of time here. I'm putting this sheet over the squirrel cage. That's probably a good idea. Just gonna, just gonna whoop. Just gonna whoop. Just gonna whoop. Okay, well, the plan is, now that we're full of soup and our mission's complete, it's time to pass out. <laughs> it's time to go to bed until 2.30 in the morning. And at 2.30, we're gonna go out and we're gonna look for some fucking shenanigans. Because sometime between 3 and 3.30, specifically 3.15, um, shit goes down because if I if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it 3:15 on the camera when they caught Bosco? 3:42 a.m. 3:42. Okay, it's man. You guys are like, taking notes this season. Yeah, it's like three o'clock is the witching hour, so I want to be out on the streets before it begins. Yeah. All right. So you all go to bed, and your alarm goes off at 2:30. This is wake up. Wake up, it's wake up time, it's time to get up, it's time to get up. I slap the phone, I'm like, thank you, Ow, Lola. Fuck, I have feeling, like, ow, I can hey, feel I'm, these things. No, you can't, you're fine, Lola, I turned that you're, off. You're right, I can't. I get up, and I just, I try and get my compatriots up. Oh, I'm already up. Oh, I turned to Chris, what is Chris doing? An alarm went off already? Yeah, it was Lola going, wake up. Oh, no, Chris is awake. Okay. He, like, jumped up. <laughs> All right, I turned to wake you guys both up. You already dressed him by the door, and Cosmo's like, but hold on. <laughs> Throws on a giant, like, lab coat, sweatpants, calls it a day. All right, so the three of you are dressed up for an... Oh, my bug's not fixed. I thought my bug was fixed. Eloise seems fine. I don't know what happened to Kitty. Oh, well, I'll figure <laughs> it out later. The three of you head out back onto the Blar Harbor Street at night. Blarber. Blarber, my bl blar loved. Where would you like to go? Hmm. Is any actually? You know what? I want to walk past the wooden palace. Are there any lights on? Are there any indication that someone is once again in there? There are indications that someone is once again in there. Oh, weird. Weird. Weird time for them to be in there again. Can we go spy on them? Can you go spy on them? I'm talking to my group. I'm like, I turned to my. Well, I guess uh, so. 
I, listen, sure. I still think Mitski. Mitski? Is her name Mitski? What's Josephine? Name? No. Josephine. I still think Josephine was did it. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was so close. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> uh write Mitski down for a later name. Yeah. <laughs> good good call. Good call on that one. Okay. I walk over to the wooden palace to go see if I can spy on the window. How would you like to do this? I walk. You like are you trying to be sneaky? Well yeah, obviously I'm not gonna go like do 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 Hello? No, I, I try to sneak over to the window so they if they're con- doing magical nonsense, I want to witness the nonsense. Okay, well, can you roll stealth to try and identify some nonsense? I suppose. I'm sorry. It's Cosmo that? stealthy? Um, Actually, they are a little bit stealthy. And that is... Ooh, that's really good, actually. That is an extreme success, just barely. So why don't just you kidding. walk me through wait, this? Wait wait, 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 wait. Apologies. Hard success, not an extreme success. I was looking at the wrong one. Okay, so why don't you walk me through the, your sneak technique? Okay. Cosmo gets up to where the light of the Church of Cash Money Danger McStinky is, um, and then sort of just starts, like, blending into the shadows as they, like, pry. Not, like, blending and, like, fully blending in, but they're trying to stick to the shadows, stay quiet, um, so they're not just, like, blatantly walking down the street and, like, crunching stuff, but they're trying to stick to the dark and then go up under the window where there is, you know, light coming through it, and then peer through that window. Okay. Great. Iris and Chris, you're seeing this. Do you want to do anything? Um, uh, I'll sneak up we... with her. Yeah, okay. Chris was going to, like, ask if they should follow, but actually, I guess we're going. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to, I'm gonna like, oh. stay on, on, like, lookout, I guess. Oh, heck. Chris, oh. Uh, uh, oh, Chris is going to go. You're going to, you're going to sneak? Yeah, I'll sneak, I'll sneak. Let me roll All some right. sneakage. Yeah, can you sneak please roll sneak in Sneaking in a snoodle in. Ew. Yeah, you know when you I, So, you know. that was good. I liked your... I, I like that. That was... On a, on a sad note. Yeah, on a sad note, though. Uh, even though I do have pretty good stealth, I didn't succeed. Would you like to do something to succeed? Or yeah, you know, I should probably... Gonna... I should probably... What do I do? Just spend some luck? Is that yeah, right? So, I'm still... So, so luck is is a one to one ratio. So however many points you would need to get a success can come out of your luck uh, to go into the roll. Yeah, let me throw five. Let me throw five luck into that. Sweet. All right. So as you get a success on your stealth, can you walk me through your? It's going to be a little less stealthy than Cosmo because Cosmo got a hard success, but yeah, I'd imagine Chris is really tall and kind of goofy. Mm-hmm. So he like lumbers over kind of stealthily, but not entirely. He's like kind of tripping on grass. I don't know how, but mm-hmm. he's definitely doing it. There's like a, a, like a sunken in hole at one point and he like <laughs> kind of steps in the hole. You, you trot over to where Cosmo is and the two of you peer inside the window where mm-hmm. you see Josephine once again in the office at an odd hour of the night uh, scrubbing the floor. And it's a very meticulous kind of scrub it's not like with a mop or or even a brush it looks like it's a toothbrush and just really intensely scrubbing this like small area around the middle of the uh of the wooden palace can i roll spot hidden try and see if i can note what she might be scrubbing a blood stain a greasy stain some kind of magical fucking incantation that she put on the floor with salt or anything or darkness perhaps yeah, her darkness spell that you want to try and detect. Sure, roll spot hidden. It, like, looking in, it's very dark. Light is in your eyes. You're going to need more than a regular success. Roll a nine. That is an extreme success. Why do I even try? Why do <laughs> I, I? I don't know why I try. Um, With your extreme success, Cosmo, you get momentary, like, dark vision. You get a flash of clarity as you try to peer around Mm -hmm. and you see unmistakable traces of grease on the floor that same kind of black greasy liquidy substance that you've seen a few times now i uh i whisper this to chris like wait there's like she's like scrubbing grease like yeah like i i couldn't i could only make it out for a second but she's definitely scrubbing grease off the floor like 
bad grease, not yeah, like... no, 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 like evil grease, like it, oh, you can fare, oh, like the squirrel God. grease. Um, oh no, not squirrel grease. I, I, <laughs> I, I gently elbow him again, and I say, "Do you see any cameras? And can we both roll spot hidden to see if we can find any cameras in the wooden palace?" Sure, I can. I can roll some spot hidden. Yeah. Shit. Oh yeah, that's My a hard bread. success. <laughs> My brizzle. You got a hard success. Yeah. All right. Guys, where are my pretzels? I'm, I'm not even gonna roll. My pretzel fell into the abyss. I don't know where it went. You might need to get that back. I'll just, put it, I'll just get a different pretzel. Okay, get a different pretzel. Chris, your pretzels have given you divine insight into the fact that there is indeed a uh, a Blawa security camera over in the corner. That's ah, pff, easy, easy to hack. We could do that. Chris knows nothing about computers. <laughs> Chris has zero percent in computer use. <laughs> I've heard it. I've heard it on Reddit. I do actually know a lot about computers and oh, government systems. You can hack that computer. Or that, that camera. You can hack that blah blah camera. Okay, is there anything else of note in the wooden palace? Mm, nope. Just Josephine scrubbing away. Okay. I I nudge Chris and I'd like to sneak back away from the wooden palace and back to Iris. Okay. Should I roll stealth again? Um yes. Yes, yeah, yes, yes you should. Both of you Chris, should. Chris redeems himself with a with an extreme success here. Nice. I got a, reg got a regular success. What is going to laugh if one of you fucking falls? I, I was <laughs> like right down the front it. steps. <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting for it. All right, but both of you nimbly get away from uh, the wooden palace and back to Iris. Hold on one second. I said to tear a page out. Sure. Okay, uh, we go over to Iris. I relay everything we just saw. Ew. Yeah, so... Ew! <laughs> yeah, ew. Do you have... <laughs> Do you have anything maybe we could use to try and hack into that security system? Like um... any computers or anything? I didn't bring anything with me. And also, to be quite honest, I don't really own anything that could help with that. I mean, I own a computer, but, uh, and this is going to be really silly for someone who owns a computer, uh, I have, if this was a tabletop role-playing game, <laughs> no discernible skills I, <laughs> to use it. If this was a tabletop role-playing game, I have a 70% in computer usage and work with computers on a daily basis, including handling difficult software and navigating public security spaces. It's actually really good, because I think I would have, like, a 0% chance of doing stuff like that. Oh, well... Um, let's cross I back to... across the street, and I'll get you my computer from my RV. Okay, as we're passing, can I also sneaky-peaky into the Church of Cash Money Danger make stinkers? Is there anything <laughs> going on in there? Uh, no, <laughs> you just see... Uh, in tonight. <laughs> uh, Cosmo, I, I think you're a little less stealthy because you're not necessarily trying to be, like, hidden. No. But you see uh, Kitty Scarlet's husband, uh, Bentley, who I don't think any of you have spent any significant amount of time with, except seeing oh. him briefly yesterday um, during the, the big show. Um, but, yeah, he's just wandering around, dusting things, tidying them. Just looks like a pretty cool. normal... Dude. Three in the morning? Yeah. Maybe avoiding his wife and child. No. I turn to the others and I'm like, guys, is it the worst idea to like gently heckle that man to go hang out with his family? Because I don't I don't know about you guys, but I've noticed that the last time every time we go in, um Kitty and her child we're not allowed to talk to anymore are just hanging out in the lobby constantly. Yeah, I guess what? we could do that. What if we stick our noses in their business like we did earlier anyway, and we redeem ourselves by reuniting um, Bentley McDeadbeat with um, Stressy McStress Pants? Yeah, sure. Okay, uh, okay, hang on, watch this, watch this. Uh, and Cosmo sidles up and goes and um, gently knocks on the door of Church of Cash Money Danger McStinky. Ah, it's open! I pop the door Holy open, shit. I'm like, hello, father? Um, oh. So you walk in, and as you go in, you see uh, Percy Fitzsimmons is also there. He looks like he has a bag, and he's about to leave. Um, oh, hi, Percy. Hey. Oh, hey, we talked to- I'm from to, Texas? Uh, congratulations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> by the 
by the way, wanted to let you know, we talked to Illness Richard, and um, yeah, I don't know. He was he's adamant that you cashed in your chips, and he was wouldn't give any more on that. I, I'm sorry, dude. Uh, it's fine. It's whatever. Not a big deal. Thank you for looking into that, I guess. Sure. Uh, so, hey, it's um pretty late. Where are you going? Home. Oh, fair. Uh, hey, Mr. Scarlet. Oh, hey, kids. I'm from Texas. Congratulations. Like, a, nice. like what is that? What is that? What? Why? Why are there so many people from Texas here? Oh, yeah, this is me. His his eyes light up when you say oh, that. No. Oh. And he <laughs> hops over like this table that's in front of him directly to like approach the three of you. It says, the three of you aren't familiar with Cash Money Danger McStinky? Um, I've um, heard of your religion, but I am not personally a member of your clergy. Oh, well, it's never too late to join. We are an organization that preaches freedom, love, and cash money. Okay. What are your family values within this religion? Well, again... Freedom to love our family, freedom to be with our family, freedom to not be with our family as well. Really just freedom. So the fact that your wife is hanging out in the lobby of a hotel with your child um, by herself, very stressed out, that's cool with your cash money god? He doesn't mind that? Can I interest you all in some pamphlets? Uh promotional brochures about some of the good the church has done for the community you there tall I... tall man you look like you need some cash money in your life i need cash money, money danger make stinky i don't need danger or make stinky whoever that man is cash money Danger makes stinky. Chris turns around and walks away. <laughs> He's like looking at like the pews or whatever's happening in here. <laughs> you start examining the pews. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. They're pewy. Nice. Yeah. Chris is not listening to this man's spiel. Mm -hmm. I take one of his pamphlets and as I'm flipping through it nonchalantly, um, I say, can I interest you in um, perhaps some advice? Well, sure. Do you want your sanctuary to be seen as a more family friendly really community driven like that's what you want to be right yeah everybody everybody knows you everyone looks up to you. everyone respects you family yeah community yeah. but you gotta be with your family to really have the support of your family and if you're with and supporting your wife and being a good father and a present husband if you do those things it's almost like people would probably respect you more and then would probably come to your church more yeah no you're right uh, honestly this is the awakening i needed honestly eloise and kitty they've always been a little skeptical the whole cash money thing. But if I convince them to be here with me overnights, really taking care of the place as a family. You'll lose your family if you do that. They'll yeah. leave you. They'll leave isn't you. that, isn't I that your entire... I, no, no. So I maybe say... start smaller and hang out with them doing things they like first. Here, yeah. What if, no. I, hear me out here, Bentley. I can call you Bent, right? Because you're about to get bent out of shape over this. <laughs> if you only make your family do things that you want to do, they won't like you anymore. And then they'll leave. And then no one will come to your church because you'll be that guy who couldn't keep his wife and daughter, even though they're constantly asking about where you are and why you aren't with them right at that moment and supporting them. But if you did things that they liked and, so, and really fulfilled their needs, then you're totally valid to ask, hey, why don't you come to the church with me? Let's spend the day here together as a family and then go get some ice cream. <laughs> and then everyone knows you as the cool dad type. I'm gonna fucking make this man a better father. I don't care. All right. Well, that was a very reasonable argument, but Bentley is not a reasonable man. So can you go ahead and roll persuasion for me? Yes. Oh, 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 two. 
<laughs> Bentley that says, is an extreme success. <laughs> Bentley says, holy shit, I got to get my family back. And he like books it out of there and says, Percy, Percy, lock up for me, Percy. Percy's I like, turn- what the f- <laughs> fuck did you guys just do? Turn around and I say, I saved a broken family. Divorce is not the only way. <laughs> Communication is usually the answers to most problems. And with that, I bid you a good night. And I start leaving. You got like parent issues or something? What? No, I don't have that. I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye, Percy. Lock up. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Come <right>. on, Iris. <laughs> night, Percy. I also leave. <laughs> uh, and as the witching hour dawns, on Blar Harbor, uh, you may have saved a family. Oh, thank God. But who knows <laughs> what other things may be lurking in the shadows tonight? Squirrels, probably. Squirrels, what? maybe. Greasy, would... greasy squirrels. Greasy squirrels. What if this man goes to hang out with his family and his greasy child attacks and kills him? Well, that's uh, well, not on us. At least he was there to <laughs> save his wife. <laughs> at least he was there to save his wife from getting nu- uh, nuked, which, you know what? Getting fucking new. You know what? That's to, a, that's a better trade off, actually. I'm gonna say after talking to the both of them for like longer than a period of five minutes, if I had to save one, even after all of that, I'm saving Kitty. I respect yeah. that. Fair. I respect that hustle. All right, and that is where we will end things for here. Thank you to Mango, Amanda Crondar, Morgan Woolbrand, Emmy Laderna, Smarties, Charlie Rose, and Adam Carpenter for their continued support of the show. You can support the show at patreon.com slash tincast and get all sorts of amazing, wonderful bonus content like the Beth Run Legendary The Cluckening. We will be back next week. I hope you will tell a friend about the show. I hope you'll leave us a rating, a review, subscribe, like, anything on whatever platform you're using to listen to this because we have so many incredible platforms to listen to this on this week we are featuring art from the incredible robin who you can follow at twitch.tv slash xj047 underscore until we see you next week please stay safe drink lots of water and take care of yourselves we'll catch you we'll catch you soon bye